The centaur in Age of Mythology Retold is an insanely strong myth unit that is causing a lot of people a lot of frustration. They are speedy, they deal a lot of damage, and when you upgrade them, they even become decently tanky. I think a lot of people are looking for a counter to these units, so here it is. The Thor Herser. What? I hear you saying. The slow, weak Norse hero is good versus speedy ranged myth units? You're crazy. Well, calm down there, I have a good explanation for why actually. When you go classical through Frisetti, you get access to the Hall of Thames upgrade, which boosts your Hersa movement speed to 5.175. This is only slightly slower than the 5.5 speed of a regular centaur, effectively preventing it from using hit and run tactics. Additionally, with Thor, you get the Hammer of Thunder upgrade, which boosts your favor income and buffs your Hersa damage by plus 15%. You get your cover shields and armor, which are 50% more effective on heroes than regular units. So all in all, it just makes so much sense to spam out a bunch of these units when you're against a centaur abuser as Thor. Alright, so we are in a game here. We're playing on Nile Cielos versus Player as Zeus. Player is one of the best Greek players in the game, and uh, yeah, we're playing Nile Shallows. This, I think, is the best map for Thor, because of what I'm doing here. I'm luring the hippos into my town center, and because of this, I don't have to build an ox cart. Oh, this so hippo bad. is that's annoying so me. You can see that right on the screen as well. <laughs> yeah. It's bugging out a bit, but I'm getting a new one there, so just a bit of wasted time early on. It's okay. And... About the time when my second gatherer is finished, maybe around my second and third, right now I will transition my dwarves over onto gold with the ox card as well. And you see already now I'm hitting the goats, and the reason I hit the goats is because I'm looking to gain favor. You see now I have eight favor, that's because I hit the goats. So it's a really nice trick to know, especially as Thor, because this will allow me to get the Hammer of Thunder upgrade that I was talking about in the intro here. Uh, first of all, I get the Pierce Armor, and then I'll get the Hammer of Thunder. So, what that does, obviously, is it boosts my military, but that's not the main point here in the Archaic Age. The main point is that I want these free dwarves to really boost my economy. And this is something you can do on this map really, really well. Right now, I have a bit of idle armory time, so I just pre-queue the Hammer of Thunder, and then I force drop 5 gold there. I mean, this is this is nitpicking. You don't have to be this precise about the build order early on, but this is like, just try to follow the general gist that I'm doing here. Um, I have seven, six on food right now. I'm going to have to add a lot more onto wood because, you see, I only have 40 wood, and I want my temple up in a decent enough time so that I don't advance too late. You don't have to be afraid of advancing uh, super late as Thor versus Zeus, I think. I, I, dude, a lot of people will tell you that you need to advance at 4 minutes or something like that. I think it's wrong. If you place your buildings in a nice defensive manner like I do here, I think you can get away with a 4.30, even 4.45 advance, just fine. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's how I play. Maybe like a super good player, Recon Mist, that type of player will be able to... Uh, to punish you for it, but you see here, I'm starting to wall and stuff like this. That's how I prefer to do things. Um, yeah, I have four on wood now, as you can see, so about the time when this wall is finished is probably also when I can start building my temple. And already now I'm sending some gatherers over onto berries. Uh, you see these hippos, they're about to be depleted already. And because I'm playing Thor, I have so many free dwarves. Uh, something I didn't mention here was I also got the mail armor or the what is it called copper copper armor It's just called that for heck armor So I have three upgrades meaning I have got three free dwarves here, so I can definitely get away with uh, Just going on to berries here even if berries are only 80% as effective as hunt Because I have so many free dwarves like my economy is still a lot better than my opponents And once again, you see my temple placement here. I'm placing it in uh, sort of extension of the berries so I use the berries and the trees as natural barriers just trying to make it as hard for my opponent to to get to my gold mine to my food to my wood all of it 
and I am getting a 445 advance. Like I said, this is a late advance. Many Thor players will tell you, man, if you look at look if you look up Thor guides, many people will tell you this is too late to advance. I don't think so. I think it's just fine. And I'm even pre-queuing up the the damage, what's it called? Weapon uh, weapon upgrade from the armory is what I wanted to say. I'm even pre-queuing that now. I'm starting to get it and I'm getting a herser out as well. So my economy is looking really, really strong here. And uh, yeah, you see player, he's advanced already. He's going to be hitting me with two heroes and a centaur and he's going to keep spamming centaurs at me. So I have to be prepared for that. You see already now, and there's a Jason there and there's a centaur, so I can't get this wall up, unfortunately. But just the armory and the house here, they're actually doing a great job for me. They're making it very difficult for him to get into my base. So I'm getting a herser there to start building this wall. I don't think I'm going to finish it. Even just this small wall here, it's nice to have. Centaur is able to get the special ability off here. Actually not. I can, uh, I can garrison the dwarves there to great effect. And like, even if I advance this late, as you see here, I haven't really taken a lot of damage. Ever so slight bit of uh, idle time on these dwarves. And it's a bit hard for me to get these uh, military buildings up. It is what it is, but just consider how much better my economy is than his. And you will realize that I'm perfectly fine here. This is an interesting case here in the game. He's starting to poke down my troll, maybe trying, maybe hoping to take it down. And I'm very, very willing to take these trades. You see here, Jason is starting to take a lot of damage. And even if he's taking, even if my herships are taking damage here, I just use my healing spring now. And all of my units are going to be back to full, whereas his, every single bit of damage I deal to him is permanent, and every damage that I take, I can just heal it back up. So these small skirmishes, these small trades here, I welcome them with open arms. They, it's really, really good for me here. Just don't, as long as I don't lose any hersers here, this is exceptional for me. And you see here, this is like the Greek attack with the two heroes, two centaurs that a lot of people will fear, but so far I haven't even taken much damage. And not only that, here I kill the Heracles, I kill the Jason as well. I haven't lost a single unit. I've barely had idle villager time as well. And now I'm healing back to full. Plus I have my uh, my kicking economy. So, dude, I'm, I'm almost willing to say that at this point I've almost won the game. That's how far ahead I am. He's lost two heroes. He uh, he went for the super early advance, where I went for the late advance, and I've got more villagers, so I'm just exceptionally far ahead right now. And this is where I also get the Hall of Thanes upgrade, like I said in the intro in the video. I'm getting Hall of Thanes, and I've got two barracks plugged down. And my unit composition is going to be Hersers and Herdmen. You see already now I'm adding in Herdmen. The Herdmen, they also benefit from the Hall of Thanes. Only 10% movement speed, though. Here he gets a nice villager kill uh, or a dwarf kill. It's fine. I'm still way ahead in both in terms of villagers and in terms of uh, resource count. He's doing a good job raiding all over the place here, but I can defend myself fairly well. But yeah, Hersers, Herdman, I think that's such a good uh, combo with the Hall of Thanes upgrade and with the um, a technology I haven't talked about in the intro is the... What's it called? Dude, look at the, never mind that. Look at that. Look at the damage I deal here to the to the fast Zeus army with my units. I can take down these uh, centaurs. He has to fight here. If he doesn't if he, uh, if he doesn't fight, I'm just uh, I'm just poking at him. I can even dive under TC here. I kill a centaur, I kill two. Now I have to leave. I'm too deep. And as always, any unit I have, I'm just sending them back to my healing spring. The troll is too slow to retreat, so I just have to fight with him. But look at that. I send my hearses back in and I kill another centaur. And while I'm, while I'm chasing the centaurs around, the herdmen are dealing damage to the cavalry. That's the idea behind this unit composition. It's really, really, really effective. He is forcing me to stay here, which I didn't really like doing. I just wanted to go back and heal, but it's perfectly fine, as you see here. These traits are well in my favor. 
Anyways, the, the technology I didn't talk about is the another Forseti upgrade, which gives your Berserkers and Herdmen plus 20% hack armor. That's so much. The Herdmen, they already benefit 10% movement speed from the Hall of Thanes, but then you get plus 20% hack armor on top of that. They become really, really good unit. And they get the armory upgrades too, of course, that I already invested into. And I'm playing super safe here. I'm just getting wood, I'm setting up farms. And insofar as I'm going uh, outside of my base, I've got military units there to protect them. Like with these chicken here, I've got a stable there too, or a great hall. And I'm not, I'm not uh, stopping to get a town center or to go heroic age or anything like this. I'm just trying to keep up unit production here. I don't want to get overwhelmed by him. So I'm keeping up my unit production, making more hearses, more herdmen. My units are about to be fully healed up. And this is what you got to do. You got to split your army like I do here so that you can intercept them as they're retreating. Because they are faster than you. But you can do these small little tricks where you split up your army like that. And then you manage to still get retribution kills here like this. I killed two or three horses and a centaur. And he barely got to deal damage. Now he's sending his full army, so I just recoup again. I even bought a few extra trolls here. He can't win this fight. I've got too many units, and my units are much too strong here too. Hoplites are a great addition for him, because my herdmen are really weak against them. But I would even say my hearses are honestly good against the, the hoplites, so... I think maybe if uh, your opponent is starting to add in hoplites instead of um, hibius, I think that's probably a good time for you to just go full hearse, to be honest. If, you're, if you can sustain it in terms of food, dude, just go full hearse. I think that's a great combo against hoplite uh, centaurs. I'm making throwing axemen, as you can see now. I've got 10 throwing axemen in queue. But yeah, you can do throwing axemen, you can do hearser. Honestly, at this stage, when you've got all these upgrades, you've done all these amazing skirmishes, it doesn't matter too much. Only thing I'm a bit annoyed by here is the fact that my healing spring is all the way back in my base. I wish it was out in the middle, but can't have everything, can you? I've got such a good economy here. Why did I lose one dwarf this game or something like that? And I've done amazing skirmishes throughout the game. Pretty much every fight that I've engaged in, I've won. Now I'm getting a TC. I, I mean, this is almost just for the heck of it. I don't... Whether I get this TC or not, doesn't really matter. I could go heroic, I could keep spamming units, just uh, try to gold, starve him. Any play I make here is good. You see, the problem with throwing X-Men here, actually, is that centaurs are really good against them if they get to them. So just something, this is why I was suggesting earlier to go full uh, hearses. Look at this. Once again, split your army, intercept the, uh, the centaurs as they're leaving. Something like this. Beautiful. Beautiful interception there. And I one-shot those two centaurs. But yeah, if you go full hearses, Greeks will actually have a really hard time countering your army. But the big downside to that is how food-heavy that uh, unit composition is. 80 food for every hearser is a lot of food, and oftentimes you won't really have that much food accessible to you. So you want to mix in throwing axemen or raiding cavalry, herdmen, whatever it is. But yeah, I'm, I'm totally in the driver's seat. He's now, now we see his army, it's hoplites and centaurs, and this is a good comp against me, except I've got so many throwing axemen, and if I micro properly, these throwing axemen are going down fast. And once again, you see, even though he's got a fast army, these are Zeus infantry with uh, the boost to 10% infantry from Zeus, I can still get retribution damage to him whenever he retreats. And it's all because of the utility of Hall of Thanes and the raw power of just the Thor armory stuff. Another thing to notice here is my favor. I've got 150 favor. You know why I have this much? You saw my intro. It's because I've got the Hammer of Thunder upgrade. And all of these hearses, I've got 15 now, so I'm getting something like, what is it, 12 and a half, more than that, 15 favor or something every minute, just by having the hearses out on the field. And then, of course, every time I take a fight, I get even more favor. And it's all for free. I don't have to pay for it through uh, favor generation or anything. 
I even use a secondary healing spring here. Like I said, I really wanted this middle spring. It's so good when you're in a situation like this. But yeah, going through Bragi. I got Thor, I got Versetti. I love adding in Bragi to that because that will boost your Berserkers even more and your Herdman even more. Plus, when you got this much of an army, 180 population, soon 190, the flaming weapons is going to hit really, really hard. And this wall, I don't know what's happening here. I can't get this wall down, as you can see. <laughs> it's super annoying. So I'm just adding the longhouse instead then. Either way, just going for a big attack here with Bragi. I know I have full population here with two town centers. I've got flaming weapons coming up. This should be a really easy game to end. You could probably criticize me a bit for not having better vision over his gold mines. I should have vision over his left gold mine and his right side gold mine here, but I don't. But look at this. I'm just running straight into his base now. Head under my arm or whatever it is you say, and just going balls to the wall here. He's countering flaming weapons with ceasefire, but I still have 15 seconds of flaming weapons after the ceasefire ends. People are complaining the ceasefire uh, lasts for too little in Retold. I think it's good that you can't counter a heroic age god power with a classical one. You can kind of counter it, but not really. As you see here, I still have a few seconds of flaming weapons, which is going to be really rough for him here. Here we go. Now I have control over the left side gold mine as well. Not even looking at the fight. Because I've got such a big army and I've got flaming weapons, I don't even need to micro. And there it is. I am victorious. That's the that's the Hall of Thanes Herser Herdman strategy to counter the Centos. I hope you liked this. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.